Pancake Classroom in 810, and we are analyzing some more documents. I actually took this from a book that I read. It didn't have pictures. That's what they're for? Yeah, the, yeah. James Bradley. Pictures from like looking good on the James shelf. Bradley, great author. So here's our source. Um, I think we'll figure it out quickly what's going on here. Um, there are two pages of it. All right, so we'll kind of break it down. So this is an excerpt taken from the Imperial Cruise, Secret History of Empire and War by James Bradley. So here we go. In 1863, President Abraham Lincoln called for the construction of a transcontinental railroad. Two teams of white workers, one proceeding west from the Mississippi River and one working east from the Pacific Ocean, began work on the giant undertaking. Those proceeding west over the Great Plains made progress, but those proceeding east from the Pacific Coast hit the solid granite of California's Sierra Nevada mountains. The white workers laid down their picks and defeat. The Chinese, from the country that had built the Great Wall, filled the gap and succeeded where the Aryan had tried and failed. Governor Leland Stanford of California wrote President Andrew Johnson, without the Chinese, it would have been impossible to complete the western portion of this great national highway. Oof, all right, so. A couple of couple things going on here. Yeah, we got, we got. You know, we're jumping off 1863. Yeah. Civil war is being fought. Mm -hmm. um, Abraham Lincoln calling for the construction of a transcontinental railroad, one that stretches from one side of the continent to the other side of the continent. You know, Lincoln's greatness, you know, guiding us through the Civil War is obvious. But the, the forethought to recognize the need for this railroad is also part of his brilliance and genius as President of the United States. He's definitely seeing the benefits to it as we're moving troops and supplies north and south around the Civil War as well. He's thinking, hey, what's the country going to look like after? Once we do rejoin the Union and form that, that, that more perfect Union back together, how can we move on as a country? And this was priority war. Priority 1A, yeah. is there's a priority 1B with the home, the Homestead Act right. as well. Um, Same year, Homestead yeah. Act, 1860. You know, getting people out west. Yep. You know, and what are we noticing? That the, there's these two teams, one working west to east from California, one working east to west from the Mississippi outwards. And the team of white workers, they gave up. That's it. They had they they had hard times. They're like, wow, this is too much work for us. We're done. And who moves in? The Chinese. They're able to cowboy up, so to speak. Yeah, yeah man up. Region. They're able to man up and stick it out. Um, you know, diligent workers. Uh, you know, we're able to save. You know, we're able to stay healthier than the white workers. I'm sure this will get into. But you know, again, and this is where they where he ends off here. You know, without the Chinese, this national highway would have not been completed. Um, when we look at this, the benefits of this transcontinental railroad, I mean, again, where, you know, during this time, Lincoln is seeing the benefits of moving supplies and troops uh, north and south. But what's that going to mean? You know, again, they're bringing up Andrew Johnson here. You know, we did buy the Pacific. We did buy the, we did buy Alaska in 1867. So we are getting into that, mm -hmm. that era of expanding, and this is going to allow us to expand west. We need to be should we go on to the next one? Uh, yeah, I'll save my thought for after we finish the next one. All right, here we go. Most American textbooks feature the May 10, 1869 photograph depicting the East and West construction teams meeting at Promontory Point Summit, Utah to drive the Golden Spike that completed the Transcontinental Railroad. Although there were many Chinese on the scene, some who had that very morning laid the last ties, when history's flash bulbs were about to pop, the Aryans self-consciously pushed aside the yellow man would succeeded where the whites had failed. Interesting. So we're giving all the credit, or most of the credit, to the completion of this railroad to these Chinese workers, these Chinese immigrants, yet at the moment of, of that history will remember, mm -hmm. when the photograph's about to be taken, get out of the way, I'm here. This is gonna be a reoccurring theme for the Chinese, unfortunately, yeah. going through the next several decades, and you can even make relations to today how some people are referring to the coronavirus as the Chinese it's flu. Problem, yeah, you know, it did originate there, but but laying it on the the, the, the feet of a minority group in this country, sure. and then we're seeing a lot of anti-Asian violent attacks in this country today. Sure. You're going to see something similar going on at this time period as well. And it's interesting because you know, again, you know, look here. It, without them, it would not have been complete. Now, you know, 
it's, it's time. This is your, Move. we Get won the, the championship yeah. moment. Yeah. We are on the podium. We won the Super Bowl. You know, everybody's celebrating, and the winning quarterback gets pushed off the, the podium, I guess. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. You know, the stars. Because, the, because the punter had a good punt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the next one. All right, with the Transcontinental Railroad complete, the workers who had built it were dismissed, and they were dispersed across the West. The pop culture image of the American West is based more on the films of director John Ford and Monument Valley, that fact. This Hollywood version features John Wayne walking through a white town. What's missing is the Chinese hotel that John Wayne would have slept in, the Chinese restaurant where he would have done, uh, where he would have dined, the Chinese laundry where he would have done his wash, and the Chinese general store where he would have purchased his provisions. Notes the historian Stephen Ambrose. So wow. what, what we're seeing here is these workers who who helped construct America, then settled, and became very successful business owners in their own right. Course. you know hotels businesses they set up um, and again the next several decades of American history not going to be very kind to these Chinese businesses um, we will eventually begin to exclude the Chinese from coming to the United States why um, they were evil they were there we look at a lot of negative Chinese propaganda no because the white Americans were afraid that they were going to take away their jobs that they were going to be more successful in life than they were. Here's the photograph, yeah. Yeah, and, and when we, going back over here, you know, when you're looking at this Hollywood version of it, you know, people sometimes, and, and for better or for worse, uh, they think, for worse, you could say. Once they, see, once they see the movie, that that's actually how it was. And it's kind of like what you learn in, in a textbook. It's, you, you can't unlearn it unless you're looking for you know, evidence to support that. So people think, oh, well, what, what they see on the, in that movie, that's how it actually was. And to exclude them, even in the movies, you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, they weren't gonna give the Chinese immigrant his due course or credit. So yeah, when we do look at this photo, uh, what they were indicating there is that, you know, you did have the Chinese workers that were excluded from this photo. You know, again, big, big moment in history. In fact, even in this photograph, I don't see a lot of workers. I see a lot of guys in suits. Yeah. A lot of guys in suits. I mean, maybe some of these guys, these guys look like they may have been workers with their boots on, but no. I mean, history is written by the victor, if you would. Right. And but the, you, written you, by you, the you, majority, if you would. You were the people who were actually doing the work. Yeah. Dangerous work at that. I mean, yeah. if you're looking at, you know, the mountains and, you know, explosions that were going on. Mixing the nitroglycerin oh, that was being gosh. used. Dangerous, the giant eventually... Work. Eventually, um, Alfred Nobel's invention of dynamite plays a huge role in the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad. All right, good. All right. I think we got it. Anything yep. else? Thanks for watching.